Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rahakurash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to get into the topic of how we, all right, as believers, all right, cannot be offended by prophecy, all right, based upon a conversation that I had with a beloved brother uh, the other day. And this is a statement that I've made in times past, all right, you know, that pretty much everything that happens and everything that we see happening is a result of prophecy, okay? So when we find ourselves suffering straight things, when we find ourselves in positions of discomfort, when we find ourselves offended, all right, we cannot be overcome by these things because they're nothing but prophecy, all right? As Yahweh Shai comes in the volume of the book, okay, and the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the, uh, you know, spirit of prophecy, we ultimately can't be offended in Yahweh Shai. As we know, this current world, this current system is getting ready to collapse, fall, all right? And we know and understand and have been preaching, all right? Because the word prophesy means what? To say before. So we can go into the Holy Scriptures and find, all right, where all of these things are going to take place. We've been prophesying it as we've entered into the labors of the apostles and elders through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. We've been prophesying of these various things to come. All right. And as we say, Babylon is going to fall. All right. As we say, the system is going to collapse. All right. You have to uh, internalize how that in itself is going to attack particular comforts. All right. As we know, particular uh, brothers and sisters are getting ready to lose jobs. OK, we'll get into that in the book of Peter is that we have to have fervent charity amongst one another and we can't allow offense or comforts to dictate our decision making because ultimately that can be the end of our walk. Offense, bitterness, as we see a lot of men, all right, uh, even rebuke, which that's prophecy. You know, the fact that we're in this flesh lets us know that, you know, we're always a work in progress. OK, so there's going to be particular things told to you about yourself. OK, there's going to be particular things that happen where you don't find, you know, uh, you're not in good favor amongst brothers, whatever. All right. You have to continue. All right. In the, the path of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. Because if you get overcome by the bitterness, if you get overcome by offense, you lose the battle as the book of Second Edgers around the 54th. The seventh chapter in the 54th verse says, all right, all of these things are a condition of the battle. OK, and if we're overcome, we lose. All right. All right. But if we do overcome, if we are overcome, we lose. But if we overcome, we win, which from the foundation of the earth. All right. The beauty is it's already chosen who 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 will overcome. All right. It, it, it's written from the foundation of the earth. We just have to walk in the path of righteousness as we've been given, you know, these bodies, we've been given this understanding, all right? We have to understand that they were given unto us to fulfill prophecy, not to fulfill our lust, okay? So we're going to start here in the book of Matthew, the 11th chapter, and the 6th verse, it says, And blessed is he, all right, whosoever shall not be offended in me. Now, Yahweh Shai is speaking unto his disciples who were going out preaching, all right. And prophesying, you know, of a way back to the father, you know, outside of the Levitical priesthood. All right. Which that offended a lot of people. And that brought a lot of hell upon the believers. All right. And the ones who were preaching. OK, so he's letting them know blessed is he that shall not be offended in me. All right. Now, real quick, let's get the book of Luke. All right. Two and thirty four. And we can't be offended in prophecy. Here it is. For years, we've been preaching and prophesying of these things to come, all right? And then when they start to hit and your comforts get attacked, all right, you bitch up, you fall out, you look for an, uh, a way to blame the truth, all right, for the fact that you're not happy, and then what do you do? Uh, you turn back, which is a very, very dangerous game to play, all right, especially in these times, 
as the Lord has showed us more than enough to let us know he's real. All right. Through his word, his only begotten son. OK, this is Luke 2 and 34. And Simeon blessed them and sent unto Mary, Yahweh's mother. Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel. All right. Speaking of Yahweh, he's set for the the fall and the rising of many in Israel. OK, so this great awakening, even in these times, this great awakening that's happened is not for everybody to win. Uh, some people have been, you know, awakened to the fact that they're Israelites to be condemned. And we got to make sure we're not of that 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 fold. All right. We want to be of the fold. All right. Of the savor of life unto life, not the savor of death unto death. It says, and for a sign which shall be spoken against Yahweh Shai, his disciples, okay, uh, those who believe on him, those who profess him, are going to be the center of contention, okay? They're going to be the center of controversy, okay? Which if you're not uh, uh, rooted, all right, these things can what? Uh, cause you to uh, fold, as the scriptures say, fear not the incredulity, the unbelief of them which speak against thee, all right? And knowing and understanding all right, all of the things that have been stated unto us, all of the things we're reading, okay, the promises that are made, you should be rooted, all right, and validated by what's written in the Holy Scriptures, okay? The Scriptures say a remnant is going to be saved. The Scriptures say even if uh, you have to, you know, be a martyr, you're still going to be raised up and put in your position, your lot, okay? The Scriptures say that ultimately uh, the, the two-thirds are going to be put out, uh, here in America, the one third is going to be delivered here in America, as well as the brothers and sisters scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. We have to believe in those things. The scriptures tell us we're going to receive a hundredfold of anything that we lost because of, uh, you know, our walk and because we've ded dedicated our time to this truth. We have to believe those things. We can't read these things and just look at them as something written on. Hey, we have to believe and internalize these things. All right. And we're going to be required to believe on a higher level. OK, as things get harder. OK, and these these, this, these are very important topics, man. OK, we have to believe on a whole nother level, man. We, we, we got to put away that childish mentality. All right. And expect. All right. Miracles expect. All right. The victory. Because if these if these things aren't at the forefront. All right. You know, because we talk about the helmet of salvation. A helmet is used for something to, you know, block, uh, uh, you know, injury. And we know spirits injure a lot of men and women, particular demons that jump on them. Well, you have to have that that helmet of salvation when these particular thoughts come into your mind and when particular offenses come, they, they have to be uh, warded off. All right. By your belief in your how about Shimei Awashai. Because if we allow offense, if we allow bitterness to overcome us, we lose the fight. Okay? So that's why Yahweh Shai said, blessed is he that shall not be offended in me because there is going to be a lot of offenses. All right? That you're going to be, um, behold, all right? There's going to be times where you, you feel wronged. You're going to have to take the low. There's going to be times where your intent is misrepresented. You're going to have to take the low. You're going to have to trust in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that he knows and understands. OK, and not try to force your own victory because victory and vengeance is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai's. So there's a lot of uh, situations that we're getting ready to uh, find ourselves in, and they're all a result of prophecy. OK, and it says here, and we know prophecy is fulfilled in Yahweh Shai. So it says in Luke 2 and 35, it says, Yea, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul also as the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is sharper than a two-edged sword. Okay, it cuts. Okay, you, we, we've all been cut. Okay, we've all been challenged. We, this, this word, it pierces. Okay, and it says that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. See, the thoughts of many men and women are revealed through what? Adversity, through prophecy being fulfilled. And Yahweh Shai is prophecy. Again, as we said, the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. So we've been prophesying of all of these things that are going to come. We've been prophesying that things are going to get severely bad. 
Okay, we've been prophesying that the devil was going to come down with great wrath. Okay, so when these things come, okay, and many more things that we've prophesied. And when these things come, okay, you can't allow uh, uh, the fact that they're there to pretty much fold you up, man. Okay, let's get the book of Matthew. All right. 24 and 6. Okay. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that none of you be troubled. Okay. Going into prophecy is like a burden to a lot of Israelites. But since the uh, plan, the, uh, the, the pandemic hit, you can see that our people are, are getting more of a serious mind towards prophecy as those are the most viewed videos now. You see, for years, Jake didn't want to hear nothing about prophecy. But reality setting in for a lot of them has them getting in a more serious spirit. OK, and you want to be, you know, and everybody has their time, but you want to be in that serious spirit and fear the Lord before. OK, these things hit hard. OK, it says. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So all of these things are going to come to pass and a lot of these things are going to be rumors. All right. But again. As the scriptures say in the book of Jeremiah, the 51st chapter, these rumors are going to eventually hit. Okay. This is the book of, let's see here. Jeremiah 51 and 45. My people go ye out of the midst of her, meaning take your mindset out of Babylon. Change your mind. Repent. Separate. All right. Be holy. OK. My people go ye out of the midst of her and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Lord. OK, because there's a particular mindset that comes along with this place that the Heavenly Father hates. All right. And a lot of Israelites, though, they have on the fringes, though, they, you know, uh, are on YouTube preaching their minds ain't separated from this place. All right. And they really want to be here. They really fear. Walking into the unknown, having to trust fully on Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and separate from this world. Okay, and that happened in Egypt with the Israelites as the wilderness was a proven point where we had to separate from Egypt. And many of our people started to look back once uncomforts came. See, once this devil starts coming down, once things get hard, a lot of the believers are going to then blame the teachers. Y'all got us in this position. We could have been all right. Well, go ahead and follow the serpent. And see how that plays out for you. See, we're going to have to trust, all right, in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai on a, a, on a higher level than we've ever trusted before. Okay, and this is what this grace period was for, to get us into that second covenant. But it's not going to come easily, all right? It says, it says in the scriptures, through much tribulation are we going to enter into the kingdom. And a lot of Israelites are under the impression that everything's going to be all right. So what do you think those Israelites are going to do? When they're challenged, when they're uncomfortable. OK, they're going to blame. All right. Uh, they're going to start to blame camps. They're going to start to blame particular men and they're going to fall out. And you see it happening already. OK, so go ye out of the midst of her, meaning repent. OK, it says, lest your heart faint and ye fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land. See? A rumor shall come both one year so that your heart, if you're not in the right spirit, prophecy can make your heart to faint. OK, see, we're rejoicing at seeing the end results of prophecy. We're rejoicing in these things. All right. And we still have particular comforts. We're still able to, you know, sit in our houses, apartments, you know, uh, go to the market and get food. All right. So there's still a level of, of, level of comfort uh, that we have. But we, we have to prepare our minds to lose these things. We have to prepare our minds to ultimately be ready to, to, to follow in the stead of Abraham as he walked towards the promised land. And that's what we've been doing since we got this truth. We've been in the stead of Abraham to where we heard this truth. We separated from our you know family spiritually, from this world spiritually, and we walk in towards the promised land. We have to trust all right, on a level that Abraham trusted. Abraham had a high level of faith. To the point where when he was told to sacrifice his son, he believed that the Lord will raise him up if he did it, raise him from the dead. OK, here it is. You tell me that uh, uh, through this child, Isaac, 
I'm going to pass this great inheritance you gave me down, but then you tell me to put him to death. Well, you must going to raise him from the dead. That's why he was getting ready to do that. Hebrews tell you he believed that what? Uh, 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 Isaac was just going to be raised from the dead. You see, what is that? That's a high level of faith. You see? So as we are here prophesying, all right, in this uh, spiritual Babylon, and the brothers and you know scattered throughout the four corners okay your expectation has to be on a high level all right your faith has to be on a high level your belief has to be on a high level you cannot have a basic level of belief and think you're going to get through this okay we talk about the spiritual power we talk about all of the things that's coming if you don't fully believe it and you have doubt in you it's not coming for you you have to believe in, in, in your expectation. As a matter of fact, let's get that scripture, expectation. And the Lord knows. Okay, the Lord knows ultimately, uh, uh, you know, our fervency and how we really feel. Let's see here. This is Philippians 1 and 20. Okay, it says, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing shall I shall be ashamed. You got a lot of Israelites ashamed to talk about the chariots. That's prophecy. They're ashamed to tell you that the MOTB uh, 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 Haragma is what we see happening in front of us. Clearly, it's there. But you got particularly Israelite. They're ashamed. All right. Because of their interest in this world. Because not wanting to be wrong, wanting to be looked at as the, the that they were right. When, nigga, you're wrong and you're leading <laughs> hundreds of thousands of Israelites to, to, to follow and trust in the beast. You had a lot of Israelites ashamed to say not to, to take that damn Biden sauce. Okay? And they stood up there and told you, you stupid if you didn't take it. Okay? See, our expectation is victory. So we're not afraid to speak against these things. Okay, as a matter of fact, real quick. It's in the book of Psalms 119. All right, and 46, it says, I will speak of thy testimonies before kings and I will not be ashamed. You see, we're, we're, we're telling these Edomites that they're going to fail. We're telling them what they're going to do before they do it. And it's happening. Everything is happening right on on schedule and we can't be ashamed. We can't be ashamed. OK. We have to tell our people the truth, man. And what comes with that is what? Uh, 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 a straight gate. OK. A hard uh, uh, times being rejected of this world. You see, but accepted of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man, because it's a sacrifice. OK. According to my earnest expectation and my hope. That in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now also Hamashiach shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or death. See, our expectation, let's look up this word expectation. <laughs> okay? We expect victory. We expect these prophecies to be fulfilled. We expect even if we pass away, we're going to awaken one day into paradise, into a new body. We believe in what is foretold. We believe in the prophecies. We're not offended by them. Strong's G603, Apakaradakia. Apakaradakia. Okay. Anxious and persistent expectation. What is your expectation? Okay. Because if you're doubtful, if you're scared, you expect to lose. You don't expect to win. OK, do you expect these particular prophecies to come to pass? Do you expect Yahweh Shah to come? Do you expect to be delivered into the chariot? OK, see, when it comes to the most high Yahweh and Yahweh Shah, our people have a low expectation, man. OK, therefore, they get low level results. See, we have to be high level thinkers. All right. In order for these things to manifest. OK. And as these things come down the pipe. OK, your expectation is going to be key. What do you expect? Your expectation and your fervency for the prophecies to be fulfilled is going to dictate how you move. You see, and the Lord has already foretold 
that there's going to be a remnant elect delivered and that we're going to eat while everybody else is starving. All right. But to get to that point is going to take what? Persecution, uncertainty. OK, being put in situations that aren't the best. All right. You could be taken to a concentration camp. OK, you could lose every damn thing. OK, who, who knows what's going to happen? All right. However, in the midst of that is when the Lord, because he already has provision set. OK, it's already written. We have to trust that Yahweh Bashmi Shai has us in good favor in that world that as the scriptures say, put therefore on the elect. OK. Let's get that. Colossians 3 and 12 put on therefore as the elect of God holy and beloved bowels of mercy kindness humbleness of mind meekness and long suffering so you have to put on the elect in the way that you walk and what you speak in your belief in your expectation of your how about Shemiah Shai okay you got particular Israelites teaching our people that Moses didn't split the Red Sea, that there's no chariot that, that followed the Israelites in the wilderness. OK, the Yahweh Shai didn't do any miracles. So how in the hell do you expect the miracle of being delivered out of America if you don't believe in miracles? OK, so your expectation and hope have to be very, very high level. And if it's low, you have to pray to Yahweh Bashim Shai to strengthen your faith, to perfect your faith. OK, because th that matters. OK, who you really are matters. Who you portray to be in front of the camera and on the videos can be one person. But who you really are inwardly, OK, can be a whole nother thing, man. And the Lord, according to prophecy, what we just read in the book of uh, Luke, Yahweh Shai is going to reveal those things in us, man. So get it right. So, again. Jeremiah 51 and 45, my people go ye out of the midst of her and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Lord. OK, unless your heart faint. And ye fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land. Now, Jeremiah 50 and 51. All right. Was written by Jeremiah given to Sariah as King Zedekiah went to pay tribute to uh, Nebuchadnezzar. It was given unto him uh, 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 Sariah to read to the captives at Babylon once he got there. And when you read it, it's full of prophecy of what's coming to the new Babylon, Babylon the Great. You see, this ain't talking about the punishment of ancient Babylon, the Neo-Babylonian Empire. This is talking about a new Babylon. So when you read these things, this is going to happen. OK, <laughs> these things are going to happen. So as they happen, your heart can't faint. Now, in the flesh, we all know, all right, we're going to have worry. Particular things are going to scare you. You may be like, oh, shit. All right. But the Heavenly Father is going to put a particular spirit in you and allow provision for you to be all right. No matter what particular situation you may be in. OK, thrown in a pit. All right. Locked away in prison. That is prophecy. OK, what does the scripture say? OK, some of us are going to be thrown into prison by the devil. And you still got to be faithful. You can't be offended and allow whatever circumstance you're in. All right. To uh, uh, throw away your, your true expectation in your how about Shai. You're going to have to be praising the Lord. Even while in those camps. All right. Even while the, 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 you see the troops rolling, you're going to have to just call on the names and whatever the will of the Lord is, it's the will of the Lord, man. It says, unless your heart faint and you fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land, a rumor shall both come one year. And after that, another year shall a rumor come. And we've been prophesying of these particular things and they've been mere rumors and people laugh, people mocked. Ah, Y'all been saying that now they're here and then violence in the land and ruler against ruler. Therefore, behold, come to uh, behold, the days come that I will do judgment unto the graven images of Babylon and her whole land shall be confounded. That's happening now. And all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. That's going to happen when the missiles come. OK, and ancient Babylon didn't fall that way. OK, so let's move on. Let's see, let's go back to um, Matthew 24 and 
6, it says, And ye shall hear of wars, make it red, and rumors of wars, see that none of you be troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. The haragma, okay, uh, civil unrest, okay, <laughs> Esau coming down with great wrath. All of these things must come to pass, okay, for a nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquake in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows, and we see them happening now. Okay? It says, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And that happened to them back then. Okay? And it's going to happen to some of us now. All right? This is going in and out of prophecies things that ultimately happened back then all right but we know that which is then is now okay and it's going into things that would happen now all right so we're definitely going to be delivered up of our own families uh, particular people you thought were down all right as you know the persecution as we're going to read down you know uh, comes for the word's sake they're going to then blame the word they're going to be offended at prophecy. Here it goes right here. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. There you go. All right. And many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. See, and because of iniquity shall abound as we see all of this evil going on, which all of these things are prophecy. OK, we have no excuse OK, we've been speaking it all of these years when, when it hits. OK, we can't tuck our nuts and, and, and try and go and hide. As the scriptures say, we have to go through the straight gate. OK, as the uh, Apostle Gabar did the video, we're on a tightrope. OK, and it's pretty much fire on one side and water on the other. OK, meaning we have to be calculated with our steps. You see? And because of iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. All right. And that word cold, as you see it here. All right. It's psycho. Many people are going to lose their mind. They're going to lose their agape love. OK. You're going to have particular uh, situations that are going to arise. All right. In which uh, many are going to choose the flesh. OK, showing you that they don't hate their lives unto death. You may you may be in a situation where, you know, everybody has to stay with you. You have a house or an apartment. Everybody got to pack up <laughs> and sleep in your place. OK, you can't be offended by that. OK, you got an extra room in your house. You know, everybody's losing their job. You 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 still have yours. The Lord's going to put you in that position for the purpose of uh, helping the body all right going into what we uh always going to in peter all right and at this time heavy persecution was going on uh you know against the church okay they were being you know persecuted getting ready to be kicked out of rome eventually okay first peter's four and seven but the end of all things is at hand be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer so you have to be sober-minded concerning this life okay concerning who you really are concerning your true original origin how it's not this world all right how this world is for the gentiles this is the end of esau's world you're not sovereign you're not going to take these uh bodies this apartment this house this car up into the kingdom of heaven and that that's where the uh sayings of yahweh shai are going to have to be in you all right. Uh, hating your lives unto death. All right. Hating your family. All right. Or anything that tries to separate you from this truth. It doesn't mean you don't uh, treat your family with respect, but there's going to come a point. All right. Where you're going to have to choose. All right. And if you allow your emotions for this life. All right. And, and the things in it, uh, you know, your reputation or anything to, you know, uh, uh, dictate your movement, you lose. OK, you're not worthy to be a disciple of Yahweh Shai. So the end of all things are at hand and be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. You have to be sober minded. You can't be drunk off of the wine of this world. OK, 
And we all have particular things that have to be purged out of us in order to be accepted. Okay. So you got to watch. You have to be sober. All right. Be real with yourself. Pray fast. Ask the Lord for strength in particular places where you're weak. Don't go around faking it. It says, and above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover a multitude of sins. Use hosp hospitality, all right, one to another without grudging. Okay, uh, particular of us are going to be in situations to where we're going to have to take particular brothers, maybe families in. Okay, it may get hot in a particular state. Okay, and brothers from a particular state may have to move down to your state. Okay, well, what are you going to do? All right, are you going to be offended? Or are you going to understand that it's ultimately prophecy? Okay, this word hospitality. Okay, as it says, charity covered the multitude of sins. All right. Philoxenos, all right, Philoxenos, hospitable, generous to guest, okay, <laughs> so all of these things are coming down the pipe, you see, and you got to do that without grudging now, there's going to be particular thoughts in your mind, because these all, the, all of these things are new unto us, all right, but that's where trust in Yahweh Bashim Yahshah is going to have to come in. And you overcome the 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 you know the negative burdens in your mind, and the uh, you know because that comes the flesh with the spirit. Okay, so you, you uh, this is the the times we're coming into. All right, and again we're going into many are going to be offended by prophecy. All right, whether it be the fact that you know our belief, okay, is going to have us to uh, be ostracized, you know. You know, uh, not being able to, to keep jobs, which, you know, if a job is your worry, then you need to check yourself and pray to your how about you shy. OK, and we all have the, the you know, the, the cares of this world and stuff like that does try to creep into your mind. But that's Satan. OK, as a matter of fact, I know there's a scripture that goes into the cares. OK. This is the book of Mark 4 and 18. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, okay, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things enter in and choke the word out and it become unfruitful. See, the word can be choked out of you. You're bringing out all of these precepts. You're doing all of these lessons, all right, but let you be put into a particular situation if you haven't been checking yourself, if you haven't been praying, if you haven't been fasting, all right, you know, according to your relationship with Yahweh Bashim Shai, okay, that's between you and Yahweh Bashim Shai. but, you know, ultimately if, you know, uh, your lust take precedence over the spirit, then you lose and the word is choked out and you become unfruitful. So what do you do? You start to blame the truth. We've seen many men over the years blame the truth. OK, or start to point the finger at other men and this and that. Nothing should be able to take your crown. You see, nothing should be able to uh, uh, keep you from uplifting the names of Yahweh Bashim Shai while we still have, uh, uh, you know, a platform. OK, so people are going to go psycho. All right. The love of many are going to wax cold. OK, and as we just read, okay, people are going to lose their minds. And us knowing and understanding the truth and, you know, ingesting the words of Yahweh Bashim Shai should give us the strength to overcome these things. All right. This is why you have to take this truth deadly serious. But right here you see it says many are going to be offended and shall betray one another. OK, and that's happening and it's going to happen. All right. Let's get the book of Luke 21 and 28. All right. And when these things all right, begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. You see, when these things come to pass, all right, you 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 got to rejoice. All right, you got to psych yourself up off of the prophecies, man. Any little thing you see, you got to be psyching yourself up, praising the Lord. 
You see 144, praise Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Okay, you, you, uh, brother, send you an article, okay, which, you know, every article don't mean, you know, the, the, the end is right there. But, all right, uh, uh, again, rumors, particular things are going to be rumors before they hit. Particular things we see happening every day are speaking towards prophecy. You have to use these things to uh, rejoice in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You can't take light of prophecy coming to pass. OK, you can't take you can't make light of prophecy. It's a big deal. The fact that these things were spoken of before we were even born. OK, and we're fulfilling it and living through them being fulfilled. OK, that is a big thing. And that is a that that is something that we, we should be lifting up our heads. OK, because our redemption draw of nigh. OK, once the last member of the elect that is here on Earth is sealed. OK, hey, the the. The uh, destruction is coming. And when you look out into the planet Earth, clearly, OK, the uh, destruction is on its way. OK, clearly the works of evil are being fulfilled. Clearly, the Lord is eventually going to intervene. OK, and Yahweh Shai himself is a stumbling block. Prophecy being fulfilled is a stumbling block. And we don't want to be offended. OK, and stumble. OK, uh, as many do. Now, this is the book of Isaiah 8 and 14. Okay, I started at 8 and 13. Sanctify Yahweh, okay, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, all right, of host himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread, for he shall be for a sanctuary, all right, but for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the house of Is the houses of Israel, for a gin and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. You see that? Yahweh Shai, who is the fulfillment embodiment of prophecy, he comes in a volume of the book and set up as an offense. OK, <laughs> and, and, and many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken, snared and taken. OK, so you have that's That's why we have to remain sober. We can't get too high minded. We can't get too caught up in the affairs of this world. We can't get too caught up in our families. We can't get too caught up in anything because we are not civilians. OK, we are what soldiers on a front line. OK, we can't think like civilians. The things that are another thing. OK, as we get closer to the end, more spiritual uh, uh, things are going to be said. OK, as the scriptures say, the natural man receiving not the things of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that are of the spirit. OK, so when 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 highly level spiritual things come out, carnal men get offended. OK, that's a part of Yahweh Shai being an offense because the mysteries are revealed unto what the servants, the prophets, things are going to be coming out. Deeper things are going to be coming out. All right. And if your expectation of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is so low, when those deeper things come out, you get offended. OK, then most likely you were looking for a way. All right. To uh, uh, be out. OK, like these guys here in John, the uh, sixth chapter. Here it is, Yahweh Shai brought out a spiritual saying that you should eat my flesh and drink my blood. And they took that as a reason to, to bounce, as, it, as, as you see here, John 6 and 66, 666, all right? <laughs> and he called Halal Yahweh Bashim Shai for victory over the beast, his image, and his mark, all right? But here it is, all right? It says, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more, Okay? And Yahweh Shai looked at the 12 and said, will ye also go away? All right. So these men who left, OK, they ultimately were offended at this spiritual saying. You're going to have that as well. There's going to be things coming out. All right. Um, that, you know, ultimately is going to offend people because what the natural men. So there's going to be all kind of things coming our way and we have to, you know, we have to hold our composure, man. OK, the natural man, let's get that real quick. OK, you have to have a high level of expectation. What's coming ain't going to be low level. So you have to broaden your, 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 your spiritual, you know, your thought process. Your expectation has to be broadened. Remember, as we've been saying, the Lord is going to require, OK, this house to, you know, to believe on him on a very high level. 
Okay, you're going to have to believe that you can step out on water and you're going to walk. That's the type of faith that Yahweh through Yahweh Shai wants from us. Okay. This is the book of 1 Corinthians 2 and 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. All right. The fact that uh, 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 we uh, it's being taught that, you know, since the tabernacle of David is being built as in the days of old. Okay. That would mean David would have had to be a part of it, right? And you bring something like that out and Jake loses their mind because they really don't understand or have faith in what's really taking place here on the planet Earth with the tabernacle of David being built. It's being built somewhere, all right? And we have to believe on that level. We have to understand that great men that we even read about in the Holy Scriptures are here before us teaching <laughs> You see, the, the, the servants, the prophets, the book of Edris tells you they will be sent for leaders, particular of them. And they came in the years following that, that prophecy in the Edris, and they're here now. Great men are being raised up. This is not a low-level thing that's taking place here. This is a very high-level happening, okay? It's not low. It may look low because what the Lord wanted this thing to, you know, come across as base. All right. To confound the wise. But don't you uh, uh, for one second. OK, uh, uh, think that this ain't big, man. And that's what happens. A lot of men. All right. Once they start to learn the scriptures, once they start to teach. All right. They lose their appreciation for what you how about Shemal Shah is doing. And it becomes about them or it becomes about this or that. All right. And then the minute they're offended, okay, they they, they show their true colors, man. It's going to happen as it's happening now. It's going to happen again. It says, but the natural man receive it, not the things of the spirit of the most high, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Okay. And Jake doesn't know how to spiritually discern at times. OK, we can't be those low level think low level thinkers, man. OK, we have to push a very high level faith unto our people, man. OK, if we're, we're teaching that chariots are going to, you know, uh, enter into the earth's atmosphere and Yahweh Shah is going to beam us up. We, we got to believe that when the scriptures say we are fools for Hamashiach's sake, you have to really be a fool. You have to really go all balls out in your belief. OK. So the natural man is not going to be able to receive the uh, things of the spirit. OK. And we have to, and as it says there, we have to have the mind of Hamashiach, man. OK. We have to understand what we're fighting for. OK. So we don't want to be of the, 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 that, you know, those natural brute beasts that are made to be taken. OK. And get high minded and forget. OK. And, and another thing is. Communicate. OK. When you're going through things with your uh, in your mind and when you're having doubts, when you talk to your brother, man, and he'll be able to restore you through the Holy Spirit, man. OK. There's particular the brothers that you talk to about about particular things. OK, what's that scripture you ha you have uh, among a thousand have one counselor that, that you should be able to go to your brother and talk to him about particular weaknesses you're having where you need to be built up and you could be anointed. You can pray and fast on it. But when you just get offended. OK, once you get offended and you, you walk towards that bitterness and that becomes the end all be all of your story, you lose. OK, so you have to utilize the brotherhood for more than just drinking and partying and eating chicken. All right. These are the men of the Lord that 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 ultimately he's given you. All right. For a, a, a body. OK. All right. Or if you need strength in a particular area, just ask the brother. Could you do a video on this? Could you do a video on that? All right. And the spirit in its time will have it done. Sometimes you have to wait on things. Sometimes the Lord ain't going to give you the answer right away. Remember, we have to be adults in this thing. OK, in spiritual matters can't be as children. That's when the scriptures say when I put away childish things, that's actually talking about your understanding of this truth, man. And how you approach these matters, we have to be mature. 
We have to be, uh, uh, as the scriptures say, uh, uh, in, in understanding, we have to be men. Let's get that real quick. Real quick. I'll get a few more. Shut it out. This is 1 Corinthians 14 and 20. Brethren, be not children in understanding. How be it in malice be ye children. Okay, I'm not touching that stove. My daddy, it burned me the last time. I'm not going to do that. Okay, you have to be children when it comes to, you know, it has to be as, as a child. You know, my father told me not to do that. But in understanding, be men. Okay, we have to be men in understanding, man. Okay? And understanding that not everything is going to go your way. Okay? That's prophecy. <laughs> okay? This is the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 and 6. It says, Wherefore it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, all right, he's quoting what we just read in Isaiah, I lay in Sion, Israel, a chief cornerstone, all right, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Okay, so you have to believe on him wholeheartedly. You have to believe he rose from the dead. Okay, you have to believe, all right, as the scripture have said, if you doubt in any of these matters, okay, then you, you, you can be in danger. Okay, you have to really question yourself. Do you believe what's really being taught? Okay, and if you truly believe on him as the scripture have said, Okay, he's precious and you're not going to be confounded. You see, but if you doubt, okay, then ultimately this doctrine isn't pure to you, as the scriptures say. And uh, the book of Titus. Let's hit this real quick and get a few more. I'm going to close out. This is the book of Titus 1 and 15. Unto the pure are all things pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. They're always looking for something to complain about. They're always looking for something to doubt. They're, 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 then they try to attack the faith of other men. Because they don't believe, you shouldn't believe it. Because they can't see it, you shouldn't see it. And they want to bring you down to that low vibration that they're on. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. All right. Whether it be because of some deeper things taught in the scriptures or whether it be because of persecution, whether it be because they got rebuked, whether it be because, you know, some situation at the end, they're going to blame the truth and start to point fingers at other men. Right. And, and they're going to do a few things. Either they're going to make the doctrine about their hurt or their belly. All right. Or they're going to act like they're going to set up and teach on their own. Then eventually they're going to fade off into the black. OK. And we've seen it happen time and time again. OK, but it just proved that they never fully believed in the first place. OK, nothing was really pure unto them. What they've received, you know, certain parts of it, they were like, nah, that's too much. OK, and there's a lot of men who come into this thing. And when when particular things arise, they, they tell the Lord, I didn't sign up for this. See? Meaning they're offended by prophecy. See? And there's some heavy things happening. All right? So unto the pure are all things pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. Okay? And the Holy Spirit itself, the Rechakwadash, is pure. We're flawed, but the Holy Spirit is not uh, 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 flawed, man. Okay? So let's go back here. Um, first Peter's chapter two. Okay. And, um, let's get, let's get this again. And six, wherefore I lay, it is also contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Sion, a chief cornerstone elect precious and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Okay. You got to believe wholeheartedly. Okay. And what he's doing, what's written of him, what's happening now. Okay. What he's coming to do, all of that wholeheartedly you got to believe it okay unto you therefore which believe he is precious but unto them which be disobedient the stone which the builders disallowed the same has become the head of the corner and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense 
to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. See? But ye are a chosen generation, and a lot of men are appointed unto, you know, the, 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 the lot therein. Okay? It's going to be more surprises. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, peculiar people. Okay? That in <laughs> peculiar means weird, different. Okay, the, the the way we believe, what we teach, you know, how we go into history, it it's uh it's challenging. All right? But if you don't give a damn about this world and you understand that this world is flawed and wicked and the rulership and the way things are done are, are off, then when you hear the way things were done in the East, it doesn't offend you. Okay? Let's look at this word peculiar. The 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 position the Lord has us in in the earth is a very peculiar position okay okay it says ice okay into among tours did i click on the right word give me one second here yep let's just look it up this way The scriptures say the, the Lord have set up the apostles last, as it were, unto death. We're a spectacle. Okay. Which that comes with a lot. All right. This is why you must <laughs> put, you know, the, all of these worries about this life and everything away. And fully embrace Yahweh Bashim Yahushah. That gives you a, the, the best chance. It says what? Slightly indefinable. <laughs> strange or odd unusual funny curious bizarre uncanny okay weird there you go we ain't gonna say that other word right there unexpected strange okay we're a very strange body of people that the lord is setting up the things we're saying and teaching are kind of it's kind of like whoa you have to be of a particular caliber in the spirit to receive it all that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Okay. Which in times past were not a people. All right. We were Gentiles, but now are the people of God, which have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Hosea one dearly beloved. I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. All right. Remember you are a stranger and a pilgrim. This is not your world. This is not your rest. Okay? This is for the heathen. This is for evildoers. Okay? We have our job. We were sent here for that job. Keep your eyes on that job. All right? And we'll end it off. Let's get this book, uh, the book of uh, Habakkuk. Okay? After he's seen this horrible vision of how we're going to be delivered. Okay, Habakkuk 3 and 17, it says, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall uh, fruit be in the vines. All right, the labor of the olive shall fail and the field shall yield no meat. Okay, which all of these things are prophecy. Okay, <laughs> the grinding shall cease. Okay, farming is going to be shut off. You're not going to be able to go to the grocery store and, 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 and get fruit and meat. Things are going to change. Okay, the flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Okay, which is that's how we eat. Okay, we, we live in a system to where we have to go to markets for the most part. And our food is, you know, is, is readily packaged and stuff. all of that is getting ready to change. Okay, so although these things are going to be cut off, what yet will I rejoice in the Lord? I will find joy in the God of my salvation. See, you have to find joy in Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Okay? No matter what position you're in on the planet Earth. Let's get this word joy in the Hebrew. Okay? <laughs> you got to find a way to rejoice in the Lord, man. And you got to practice now. God. Y'all, and, and know that the Lord knows, you know, he's not going to put us any more on us. 
all right, than we can handle. He knows, all right, he knows, and it's already written. So to rejoice, exalt, to be glad, all right, to tremble from fear, to rejoice, okay? So you have to delight in prophecy, not allow it to make you to say the Lord ain't real or, or, or you know, the Lord ain't, he can't deliver me out of this, all right? It says, Yahweh is my strength. And he will make my feet like hinds feet. He will make me to walk up on my uh, high places to the chief singer on my string instruments. And high, you know, the way that these particular animals walk on very steep, you know, uh, walls. OK, it, it seems impossible. It seems like they're going to fall. But somehow they completely walk up and down. OK, those mountains. OK, like goats and stuff like that. Okay, I mean, it looks impossible, but hey, the, the Lord puts the spirit on them, all right, and they're good. See, First Corinthians fifteen and fifty-eight. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. For as much ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Now, this whole chapter, he's breaking down how we're going to be resurrected and given new bodies okay <laughs> we're going to be changed okay the laws are going to be put in our inward part but at the very end this is what he says knowing that all right be ye steadfast and unmovable let's look up this word unmovable okay Give me one second here Strong's G 277, Ameta Kinitas, Ameta Okay, not to be moved from its place, unmoved, metaphorically, firmly, persistent. Okay, firmly, persistent. Let's see here. Firmly, persistent. Okay, persistent in the belief and the faith of Yahweh Bahashim Yahashah being real, man. So I'm going to leave it there. Uh, hopefully, I'll edify it on to the next. Shalom.